Hey there, welcome back to the next video tutorial for the property management workspace in Podio. As I mentioned in the previous video, the next bunch are going to be talking specifically about renters because this is where you're going to spend a lot of your time. Not only will we be managing our active tenants in this app, but we're also going to be managing our prospective tenants and we're going to have a renter CRM set up in here as well. All right, so there's plenty to do here. Now, uh, as we get started, let's talk about the basics. And one thing, one concept that is really important to this setup and actually many app setups that you'll see in Podio is the concept of having a separate contacts app for, um, for people's information, okay? And what we mean by that is the renters are the the um, items that we're going to be assigning leases to, we're going to be communicating with. But what happens, especially with property management, is often we'll have a tenant that is comprised of multiple people. All right, And that's the instance where you might have a couple that's renting from you, or maybe you have a group of friends that are renting from you. You're only going to execute one lease for them. You only want to count them as one renter. However, they're made up of multiple different people. And the way that we accomplish this within the app is we have our renters app, which is related to the contacts app. Let's show you how that works. So if you see here, some of my renters, you see multiple names, all right? The way we do this is the very first field in the renters app is a relationship field to our contacts app, all right? And we allow multiple entries in there so that I can have Carter, Landon, and Wyatt all in the same renter, all right? Now Carter's information is stored over in the contacts app, last name, first name, mobile, and email address, okay? The contacts app should be used to store really, really basic info, just their contact info, really nothing else, because everything else is collectively stored. What I mean by that is that these uh, people are all part of one renter, and they're all part of this unit, okay? They are all for this unit. So there's no reason that we would have to, on each individual record, put in the unit, right? So that's a concept that's really, really important. Now, when we communicate, we can communicate directly from this app. We're going to be calling on all of these email addresses and all of these phone numbers if we're going to be sending text messages or email addresses, okay? So that's a really important thing um, that you need to be aware of. Now it's really, really, of course, possible to have just one single contact person, and that's that might be most of the cases, right? Uh, if if you have small one bedroom units, it's probably one person. But uh, we want to have the ability to add multiple people to it. All right. So what I would like to do first is talk through how we might be using this app as a CRM. And by CRM we mean we have a vacancy or we have our website live and we're receiving inquiries, people that would like to rent from us, all right? And um, this is how we would add them. Now we can add them in more than this way as well. We can do email to item and we can also set up a web form for uh, people to indicate their interest in our units. But um, let's pretend that we're just going to be entering them ourselves. So you would have to put in their contact info. Now let's pretend that this person doesn't exist yet. Uh, we would go and create a new item, all right, put in their uh, information here. Now their mobile phone number, I'm going to encourage you to try to get as many of these as possible because we're going to be able to text our, our renters, all right? Click saving, re save and return will bring us back to the renter area where we've entered the new person's information. I'm going to indicate the unit they're interested in. Status, we can leave as new for now. We're not gonna send an application yet. Pretty much that is all we really need to do for now. We could put, put in here, this is kind of the profile area, but let's just click save renter for now and let's let this kind of get up to speed, all right? And what will happen after we have the creation of a new item is now this person will fall into the pre pre-made view of renter CRM. So in the last video, I showed you the card view. Now the card view makes a lot of sense for renters who fall into your CRM. What this is, is a filtered list of all my renters who are not yet tenants, okay? And um, if they were tenants, they would show up in the active tenants. They're not yet tenants, so they're gonna show up here. And what I have across the top are my statuses, 
Okay, so I can move, um, if I just refresh this, I can move these, these individuals throughout, all right? Um, actually, let me just go and grab the one I just created. What's happening right now is we just have a little bit of a um, slowdown in the calculation from Podio. Sometimes this will happen on the weekend or something. There you go, and it started to fill in here. Um, but actually, while we're here, we can talk through some of this. Uh, we have our header set up. This renter profile is where you'd want to go and put in potentially their preferred move-in date. All right, so all the information that you could gather on a uh, call screening or uh, during a first meeting, how many bedrooms are they're interested in, how many occupants, what their budget is as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. And you can see this is kind of made up to be ready for a web form. All right, so let's go back to my CRM now that the calculations are kind of filled in. So here's William. So I can move William throughout this process. When I get in touch, let's say that it comes in from a, um, a web form. Once I contact William, I can move it to here. All right, and I can keep moving him throughout. Now, if I would like to set up an appointment with William, we can do that directly from this app, all right? Now, we have our appointments app. So we could go to the appointments app and go new appointment. That, that we can do. But um, we set up this system with a lot of automation. So I, I would like you to not have to waste time if possible, right? So what we can do with William is we can move down here to our scheduling and appointment section where um, we can... Set a date and time. And if I were to click this button, it will trigger to schedule that appointment with William. All right, we're going to show him the unit. All right. So the new appointment was created for William Jackson on the 28th of December. If we click that button, it'll move us to the appointments app where you can see we've pre-filled in a lot of this information. Now it's going to automatically populate uh, at least one attendee whomever created that appointment. And we can always add and remove here. Now the tenants have not been notified yet and we have auto SMS and auto email reminders off. Remember this comes from the entities, okay? So if my entity that owns 15 Custer has this as off, then these will default to off. I can, of course, turn these on, and what that would do is on the day of the appointment, William will get an automatic text message. Okay, same thing with the email. And then we can also uh, have ad hoc reminders sent. Send a reminder email, send a reminder SMS. So if I click send reminder email, it's going to send William a notice and say, hey, um, you're going to have uh, a, um, Excuse me, you're going to have an appointment coming up and would you like to go to it? Now, if we look at what that email looks like, we've automatically sent this to William. All right. So now um, this is the reminder that he's got an appointment. Now it copied me on it. Basically, if we think of what the email address, this is William's email address. This is the rental manager's email address. So it's going to copy the uh, rental manager. But as you can see here, it brings in the email signature and the logo and everything that William needs to do. And actually what we're gonna do too, and you'll probably have in your packages, we'll have a confirmation button in there as well. All right. So great, William's been reminded. And that's how we can, from one app, create things in, in the next, right? So that's great. Now the appointments, is a really simple app if you know it's just really a schedule a scheduling app but you can see on your calendar your appointments you have now you can integrate this as well which i encourage you to do with your google calendar or outlook or anything like that but this is the start of a crm where we have the people that we're interested in and we have the different communications etc now we can also do some document sending from this okay now one of the the um, features that is included with the app package is the ability to integrate with right signature and we've set it up so it's ready to go all we need from you is the templates that we're going to use and, and you need to be using right signature all right if you have that in place this button will send an application to the uh, the renter to fill out all right so um, that's something that we can get you, get you set up with as well all right, so that does it for this video. The next video, what we're going to do is we're going to show that application in process, show it uh, going out to William and then coming back as he fills it out. 
And then we're also going to confirm William as a tenant and show you how that process works. All right, so join us for the next one. A lot more to come with the renters portion of the property management app package. Thanks.